We'll try that again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, this is pretty exciting. I, I want to start off by thanking uh, you all for coming out. This is a very important moment for the citizens of Floyd County, very important moment for our students. And um, before I get into my prepared statement, I, I do want to just appreciate uh, all of you taking the time minutes out of your time to come here and support us. Uh, just so you know, we have some of our, our best and brightest with us. We've got students from Floyd and New Albany here, uh, Blotter, Bagpiper, WNAS, I think that's way cool. Um, and of course our, our local media, video media here. Uh, we have school board members, we have parents, we have teachers, we have school administrators, Chief Bailey, Sheriff Lou. Uh, this is amazing. The, your support is amazing. So here's uh, what I think will be the um, the agenda for the day. Uh, my name is Brad Snyder. I'm the current superintendent here at Normandy Floyd. I have a prepared statement that I'm going to read that will be roughly two minutes in length. Uh, then I'm going to yield the podium to uh, Mrs. Joy Lohmeyer, and she's going to deliver uh, a strong endorsement on our behalf, which I very much appreciate. And then we'll, uh, Joy will yield to uh, Ms. D. Uh, Rono, who's uh, taking the leadership position of Safety for our schools, Floyd County, our PAC. And then we'll do uh, kind of a free-for-all FAQ uh, or questions. So some of the press have asked for private one-on-one uh, -on -one stuff. That, that's fine. I'll make myself available, as will Joy, as will Misty. Um, or we can do it as a, as a team, and you can shout out your questions, and we'll deal with that. So maybe 30 minutes total run time. All right? Again, thank you for coming. Um, and here will be my prepared statement. All of us are familiar with examples of highly publicized man-made student catastrophes. When they occur, these events monopolize the public dialogue for weeks on end, with many demanding that something be done. These events are forcing school leaders to change their thinking in the way we must approach school safety on the local level. Society has evolved, and the challenges of adolescence have also changed. Schools receive more and more students affected by trauma. Students often do not have resources to form rational judgments, develop supportive relationships, or seek guidance on how to cope with traumatic events. So many of our students act out or act on impulse by using readily available technology to express themselves. to express their intentions or their need, often thoughtlessly without deliberation regarding consequences. Social media, cell phones, and the internet become easy, easy weapons of terror. School officials encounter this situation every day. In November of 2018, the community of Noblesville experienced tragedy when a 13-year-old student shot and injured a fellow student and his teacher. As a result, the Indiana General Assembly wanted to do something to help local schools improve student and staff safety. So local communities have now been given the option of asking taxpayers if they are willing to improve student safety. The bottom line is this. If a community wants additional measures to increase safety for their staff and students, they can, but costs must remain a local responsibility. The New Albany Floyd County Schools have spent the last eight months engaged in a community conversation with all stakeholders about what can be done. We are providing our answer of what we think our something looks like. As a result, the school corporation is putting forward a comprehensive plan focusing on enhancing preventative as well as proactive safety measures. The community will have a choice in this matter, and their final decision will come to us on May 5. School safety is a difficult conversation and one we do not enjoy having. But we also believe it's the right conversation to have at this particular point in our history. There are no easy answers. We believe our schools are safe. But with extra help, we believe we can do more and become safer. All of us collectively work every day to ensure our students are as safe as they can be with the resources we have been given. We would like to ask our community to strongly consider the merits of this conversation and ultimately vote yes to support the well-being of all of our students and all of our staff. I'd like to introduce Mrs. Joy Lohmeyer. Oh.
I'd like to introduce Mrs. Joy Lohmeyer, president of the New Albany Floyd County Teachers Association. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joy Lohmeyer, and I am the president of the New Albany Floyd County Education Association. I represent approximately 715 teachers of New Albany Floyd County Schools. During the last several weeks, as regarding a potential safety referendum for New Albany Floyd County Schools, the Education Association has had discussion with building representatives, conducted a survey of both members and potential members, and had a culminating discussion with the Association Executive Committee. The confluence of this input has led teachers and educators of the New Albany Floyd County Education Association to endorse the safety referendum. We believe that it is in the best interest of our students, families, and our communities. Educators' daily goal is to have as many students as possible ready to learn when they arrive in our classrooms. We understand that learning is about risk-taking, and risk-taking only takes place when students feel safe. Safety comes in many forms, emotional safety, so social safety, and physical safety. We believe that in order to have a safer, better educated community for the future, we must create an environment that supports student learning and academic success. This means that students must feel safe enough in every aspect of their lives to take risks, to attempt learning, to make mistakes, to try again, and ultimately succeed. Because of the importance of the many topics surrounding safety for our students, the association requests that administration and the board seek input from teachers throughout the eight years that this referendum funding will cover. We encourage and seek the support of the community to invest in the mental, social, emotional, and physical health of the students in our schools now to ensure a safer, more prosperous community in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. So I'm Misty Rono, and I'm the uh, chair of the Safety for Our Schools Floyd County PAC. Uh, last year, our Indiana State General Assembly heard the cry for help from schools across our state in response to a school shooting. A school shooting. Those words are something that we as a nation have seemingly become desensitized to. Can you imagine? It happened two hours away from our homes here to children in Indiana in a public school. Schools are a place filled with children, our most treasured resource and vulnerable citizens. While school violence might not be a daily conversation at our dinner tables as voters, voters need to understand that every day our schools have to be prepared to have a cohesive and complex safety plan in place to respond to the most horrific scenarios imaginable. While the average citizen might not understand the planning, our children do. Every day in our public schools, our children are trained how to respond to terror. They are in our public schools. They are being trained where to best hide their tiny bodies to limit their vulnerability in case of a school shooting. How horrific is that? Our children understand this reality and the importance of this. School violence has a far reach. Our NAFC schools have been working diligently with a multidisciplinary team to craft this referendum to meet the needs of our students who live whole and complex lives beyond the walls of our schools. The state has handed our schools this tool, our school safety referendum, as a way of seeking funding through communities to enhance the safety of our schools and providing desperately needed services. We know, what we know, is that happy, healthy, whole children do not commit acts, heinous acts of violence, or pose a threat to themselves or others. A yes vote to this school safety referendum will provide the absolutely necessary resources to intervene and prevent children in crisis from acting out in violent ways. 
This referendum will allow us as a community to be proactive and prevent tragedy. It also allows schools to better prepare to respond to violence with better tools. The problems that cause this aren't unique to our community. The state has identified these needs as universal for our state and sorted them into nine permissible categories for spending and turned the responsibility of ensuring school safety over to voters to benefit schools, frankly, lucky enough to exist in communities willing and able to support them. Floyd County is a place where this is possible. And for that, we're all incredibly lucky. And we have a responsibility as voters to take appropriate action. We live in a state that chooses to fund education in this way. As responsible citizens, it is our moral obligation to make sure that our schools are safe. The Safety for Our Schools Floyd County PAC will be working every day from now until May 5th to answer questions so that every voter understands this and the role that they play in making sure that the children of Floyd County have every opportunity to grow up healthy, happy, and whole. The success of this referendum directly benefits every child, teacher, homeowner, business owner, developer, and citizen of Floyd County. The Safety for Our Schools PAC has received overwhelming support from members of the community that include medical professionals, law enforcement, first responders, mental health professionals, social service organizations, teachers, real estate agents, developers, business owners, parents, and just residents who want the opportunity for our kids to grow up in environments where they are free to learn and live to their potential to become the future of this community. We're asking directly for your help and ultimately for your vote. Please visit SOSFloydCounty.com to learn more about this referendum and how you can do your part in making sure that we succeed in this effort and secure a yes vote for this school safety referendum. The time to act is now. Thank you. Um, before we get, I, I want to personally thank Joy and Misty. Um, they didn't have to do that. Right? They did that because they wanted to. Uh, they, 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 they stood up because they believe in the cause, and uh, I appreciate their efforts. I'll act as MC. I don't know if you have questions or if you want to do uh, this privately, but I, I'll, uh, if I don't have the answer, I'll direct it to Joy or Misty, or we have some other experts in crowd. So has anybody got anything they want to ask? I'm very good at silent pauses. Yes, ma'am? That's a good question. Um, trying to think, anybody want that? I, I will field it. Um, is that the idea? Is how will they get noticed? Is by having trained professionals in the building, whose job it is to, is to notice that. Teachers notice this type of thing, and they just don't have the proper place for the referral. Um, so again, the idea is if we can have behaviorists, if we can have therapists, if we can have social workers in the school where uh, the student is experiencing um, a life circumstance, there is help in that building to get them. We, we're all community, right? Uh, kid, kids know what's going on. Teachers know what's going on. Uh, but the idea is to put a resource that can do something about it. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Question for me is what's the plan from here to get the voters, especially the voters who don't have children in schools? I'll yield that to Misty. Uh, the, the question um, by News and Tribune is, um, What's the plan from here? 
uh, giving the demographic that most voters do not have children or grandchildren in school, uh, what are we going to try to do to educate them? Um, so first of all, for anyone that doesn't know, I mean, this essentially is a full-blown countywide campaign. Right? It's a nonpartisan campaign and without a candidate. Um, and just like any campaign, you are trying to connect with voters, um, understand their concerns, and let them know how you are willing to work to fill those, right? Uh, and that's what we're doing. This PAC is organizing um, an army of citizens to go out and reach people. We're asking everybody, talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends, talk to your coworkers, let them know this, uh, although this stream of funding does put money directly in the hands of our schools to provide services for children, the benefit extends way beyond the walls of the school, right? We know that growing healthy, strong, whole children leads to healthy, whole, strong adults. Those adults then become leaders in our community, parents raising future generations. Um, it, it affects everyone. There's not a single resident or person who depends on the health and well-being of Floyd County that won't directly benefit from this. Thank you. Any more? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, well, let me pull them up here so that I have them in front of me. Um, okay, the question was, um, make sure I get your question right. The question is that uh, we, we know that the uh, law states there are nine categories, and I think your question is how did those uh, nine categories guide our final decision? Well, um, that's a good question. And we, we sat as a community, we sat as an administrative team, and we ultimately included a bunch of uh, stakeholders in our discussion, and that we think there are some categories that just jump off the page, right? That, that we are we as a local school district are not doing near as much as we could. While there are other categories uh, that we're doing fine with, and let, uh, we'll take the first one for example. The first of the nine happens to be school resource officers. Well, we have the good fortune here in Floyd County that we already have six dedicated officers employed. All right, so we're not starting from zero. We have six. Now, could we benefit if we had eight or nine? Yeah, we think we could, so we put that on the list. But category number eight um, talks about establishing programs addressing youth-specific mental illness, addiction, anger management, bullying, and school violence. When, when we read those words, that was the item that jumped off the page to us. I mean, that was the clarion bell that said, that's exactly where we would spend our money if we were given money. And I'll read that again. Address programs, programs, right? Addressing youth-specific mental illness, addiction, anger management, bullying, and school violence. Because we think that goes to the root of the entire conversation is that we know um, bullying is real. It's real in Floyd County, it's real in Indiana, it's real in the United States of America. It, it's, a, it's a facet of youth. We also know that anger management uh, is real. We know that school violence is real. We know that me mental illness is real. Um, so the idea is that with that bullet point, we felt that, that it was the one that made the most sense um, for our plan. You know, and some of the others, again, it would be kind of like school race, you know, for example, um, purchasing equipment to improve uh, safety of a school building, school grounds, or school buses. Well, we have 17 schools, um, and on one level, all of those schools are the same. But on another level, they're not. 
there, there are differing ages of, of uh, newness and uh, maintenance and repair. For example, we put in, um, we, last year, two years ago, we, we built two brand new schools. Well, those schools have school safety features that some of our older schools do not have, right? So in terms of a budget allocation, we don't need to budget for all 17. We need to budget for something less than 17. Um, whereas the programs addressing mental illness, addiction, anger, that, that does require all 11,600 students. So I rambled a little bit on you, but I'd be happy to work with you a little bit more. A, that's a very astute question. Back in the back. Yes, sir. Well, uh, that's a strong question um, because, uh, again, that goes to the, the fundamental uh, agreement and the challenge that we face in, in everyday education is trying to get a, a young person through the system into adult life requires the strongest of all partnerships. Which require, it requires strong support from the home and strong support from the school. And uh, in the cases where you get both, uh, you're going to get better results. Um, and in this case, I guess I would point to our desire to have social workers on our staff. Um, our teachers and our principals, their, their core consideration and their core duty is during the instructional day. Yes, our teachers and yes, our principals do make evening phone calls. Yes, our principals and yes, our teachers do uh, meet before hours or after hours, but by and large, their job is to focus on instruction. Um, but a social worker's job is to be that liaison between the home and the school and to be that voice that, that can help in matters that go beyond teaching and learning. Uh, you know, uh, try to get them to other resources, other um, agencies that can provide the type of support that, that, that a struggling family may need. So it's social workers is a short answer to your question. Thank you. Who had the bright idea of inviting these students in here? They keep asking really hard questions. <laughs> Going once, people must want lunch. Going twice. Any other questions? We sincerely appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you. <laughs>